I spent most of my working life dealing with the subject of mixing fatigue analysis, CAE-based stress calculations and dynamics together in a practical manner. Uh, and I'm, this presentation is intended to give an overview of what's currently possible today. Then I'm going to follow this with a discussion of the known limitations. And then I'll look at some possible solutions to those known limitations. In terms of what's possible today, uh, there are a number of commercial packages around which address the topic of doing fre frequency-based fatigue life calculations. MSC Fatigue is one of the more well-known of these and follows the process shown on this slide. The starting point for a, a frequency-based fatigue life calculation is load inputs in the form of PSDs. If these load inputs are applied at multiple points on the model simultaneously, then there would also need to be some information about the correlation between the inputs that would typically be described using so-called cross PSDs. That's one of the inputs. The other type of input would be the stress information coming from a stress solver like Nastran. So you may have previously run a Sol 111 running Nastran, generated stress transfer functions, and these would be a, a second input to the process. The next step would be to read these transfer functions into the, into the fatigue analysis procedure and then do something with those stresses to make them suitable for a fatigue life calculation. This typically means turning them into either principal, stress, uh, principal stresses or von Mises stresses. Once these stresses have been conditioned in this way, the next step is to calculate the response PSD using the stress transfer functions and the input PSDs. And this uh, response PSD is then used to do a fatigue life calculation. Procedures for this are typically uh, done using Derlich or Steinberg or Lalanne or the so-called narrowband approach. So that's a typical procedure as it exists today. Types of applications for this, uh, this type of procedure are um, vibration loads where the loading is a single input, so single input by base vibration loads. Multiple input vibration loads are also suitable for this. Uh, severe vibration loads where there are some mean stress effects also included. And those are all forms of kinematic input load. Loading might also be in the form of a diffuse sound field or turbulent boundary layer. These are all types of loading which are most efficiently uh, described in the frequency domain. So a question that often arises is, if the loads are in that form, how do we, how do we design for that? Do we do it with test, or, we do, or do we do it with analysis, or in fact, do we do it with both? So over the next few slides, I'm going to look at different uh, uh, test scenarios, different uh, input load scenarios, and then discuss the, the options, whether it's possible to do it in the time domain, whether it's possible to do it in the frequency domain or with an analysis procedure. So this is one uh, type of, of uh, test scenario, so-called narrowband uh, narrow input of loading to a, as a base excitation to a structure. This is quite easy to do in tests. It's also quite e easy to do in analysis. So this doesn't really pose too many problems for us in, in, either, uh, in either way. The problem with this is it only really uh, looks to identify very specific types of failure modes because of the nature of the input load. So another uh, type of uh, load application might be uh, uh, continually varying frequency content in the input. So typical of this would be a so-called sine sweep, constant amplitude sine wave of load applied over a varying frequency range. Purpose of this would be to identify failure modes at alternating alternating different uh, frequency values of load application. In terms of whether this can be done or with test or analysis, the answer again is yes to both. You can do this easily in test, and it can also be done easily in an analysis procedure. Okay, what happens when we take one of those load applications, either a sine sweep or the narrow band random, and we then try to include with that a static offset? Well, this poses problems for both a test procedure and an analysis procedure. So this isn't particularly easy to do with current methods. Let's now look at uh, uh, input loading where the frequency content is, is applied simultaneously over a wide range or a wide band of frequencies, so-called wideband random input. This used to be uh, problematic for an analysis procedure until the last, say, 20 years. But nowadays we have procedures that work perfectly well for, for an analysis in the frequency domain. And of course, this can also be done 
uh, adequately and, and uh, in an acceptable way in the test uh, environment. Problems really start to ari arise in terms of analysis when you try to mix random inputs with deterministic inputs. Here we have a typical, narrow, a typical uh, test scenario which involves narrowband random applied simultaneously with a series of sine wave harmonics. This is uh, reasonably easy to do in a test environment, but in an analysis procedure this is very problematic. In fact, we really only have one option currently, and that is to switch the analysis, uh, to, to do the analysis procedure in the time domain, which is quite impractical. This is also true if the input loading is a mixture of wideband random plus sine harmonics. We have exactly the same problems in, the, in terms of doing an analysis. You're pretty well forced to, to do this in the time domain, and again, that's really quite impractical. From a test perspective, uh, it's again quite straightforward. Um, and and an, a third type of problematic load scenario is wideband random with a sign sweep, another typical test requirement. Again, from a test perspective, this is quite straightforward. From, but from an analysis perspective, this is very problematic and again forces us into the time domain, which again uh, results in a quite impractical method of analysis. So, where are we today? We have a, a certain uh, procedure which we can apply in the frequency domain. We can apply random loads, we can uh, generate transfer functions with stress solvers, we can rotate these onto appropriate axes, we can calculate responses. So we have a reasonably sophisticated method of analysis currently. Where, we, uh, where this doesn't work very effectively is when we have to mix different kinds of load types. So if we're trying to mix random with deterministic, with static, then we, 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 we quickly get into trouble uh, and we're forced into a time-based method of analysis which, uh, as I said before, becomes impractical. Another common issue or typical issue that we need to be careful with is correlation between inputs. If you have a single input, there is no correlation to deal with. If you have two or more inputs, you have to know the correlation between those inputs and apply those correlation functions, cross PSDs, in appropriate ways. Uh, some analysis procedures today, such as MSC Random, deal with this in an, an acceptable way, but that procedure doesn't have a fatigue calculation included at the end. Uh, MSC Fatigue has a limited way of dealing with correlation, but does do the fatigue calculation at the end. So we have some missing um, aspects of, of how we deal with correlation. Another problem we have is how to deal with static offsets in an analysis procedure. This is very hard to do uh, as things are currently uh, presented today. And then we move on to these, the problem of deterministic loads. As soon as you need to include deterministic loads simultaneously with random uh, environments, then it becomes very difficult to stay in the frequency domain and we're forced into the time domain. Um, another big problem with this procedure uh, is that the, the way things work currently today is that stress is treated, stress calculations are treated as uh, uh, stage one, fatigue is, calc is, is treated in stage two, and there is often a, a very large transfer of stress information between those two procedures. So we need more efficient ways of, of, of managing and transferring stress information between those two processes. And finally, we need to be able to do the fatigue calculation in a more sophisticated way. Currently, only a stress life fatigue calculation is, is, uh, is, is possible, but there's no reason in principle why this couldn't also be extended to strain life uh, to include mean stress effects, and in fact, even to be able to do a crack growth calculation. So because we have those uh, problems, uh, the typical uh, designer analyst will often ask the question, well, can I do everything in test? Because then I don't, I don't have to worry about these analysis problems. And this has traditionally been the way to, to deal with this. But uh, nowadays it's becoming uh, more common that the certification bodies are saying, okay, uh, you can do this in test, but I want, to, I want you to provide some analytical backup, some an analysis procedure which verifies what's been done in test. So uh, designers and analysts are now looking for ways to do this in an analysis procedure. So the second question then is, should I work in the time domain or should I work in the frequency domain? Time domain is possible, but extremely impractical. So I think it's beyond the, the, the capabilities of most analysts to be able to solve these problems in the time domain. Uh, 
So that forces us back into the frequency domain, and that's really the subject of this presentation and the strategy presented in this presentation. So we're currently working, I'm currently working with a bunch of like-minded engineers looking at these issues, looking at ways to solve them. And outlined on this slide is the procedure that we think would enable uh, these kinds of problems, problems to be solved entirely in the frequency domain. This is something we are currently working on, and if it's if it's something that's of interest to you, then please, uh, you know, keep uh, make contact uh, through the email address I'm going to provide on the next slide. So, I've given a summary of uh, frequency-based uh, analysis and fatigue life calculation procedures. I've shown what's possible today, what what might be possible in the short and medium term. Uh, we've discussed different analysis, test procedures, and what's, what's practical, what isn't practical. Um, so I think we're, we're uh, a lot of interesting things happening in this field, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge to engineers and designers today. They're faced with the option of doing it uh, through either test or analysis. Test used to be the preferred uh, procedure. Nowadays, they're being asked to look at analysis, and that's the reason for uh, trying to come up with more efficient ways of working in the frequency domain. Thanks very much.